Hey everyone, um, we are going to talk about angular momentum today. Um, so angular momentum is similar to linear momentum. So we're going to start with linear momentum first. So linear momentum, your equation is P equals M times V. And the easiest way to explain what momentum is to let's say a 10 year old is how hard it is to stop a moving object. The greater the mass is, it's gonna be harder. And the greater the velocity is, it's also gonna make it harder to stop that moving object. Okay, but we're not talking about linear momentum, we're really talking about angular momentum. So let's say instead of a moving object in a straight line, I have a rotating object in a circle circular path it's rotating okay let's say that object is tethered to a string of some sort okay so you should always ask yourself when you are working with rotation problems how does this equation translate to rotation just like with kinematics and torque and energy all of that translates to something in rotation that's an equation okay so first you want to ask yourself how do i identify how, what's the counterpart for mass for rotation and yeah rotating objects have mass but the way we define it is how hard it is to stop it or the tendency to resist change so instead of mass i write moment of inertia Okay, and for V, the way that's translated, and I know you guys know this, is instead of V for, for linear speed, I'm going to write omega for angular speed. So this is the counterpart equation for angular momentum. And the variable we use is L. Okay. Um, now, the simplest way to think about the way we can make this into a different equation is we always start with the point mass. So the moment of inertia for a point mass, like this, this is a piece of particle that's rotating, and the string doesn't have a mass in this case, so we don't really need to incorporate the string at all. Okay, so the moment of inertia for a point mass is mr squared, and instead of um, thinking about this, this angular speed, I want to think about this linear speed at this point in time. Okay. So instead of writing Omega, I'm going to write what Omega is equal to, which is V over R. Okay. So this is your other equation for angular momentum. I can cancel out one of my R's and I get M R V. And it's important to understand that this velocity and this r are perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to write a perpendicular right next to one of those. Um, some of you might recognize if I rearrange this equation to mv r perpendicular, mv is going back to our original momentum equation which is P. So P times R equals L. Okay. But really you're not going to use this. You're not going to use this one. You're going to go back and always use this one and this one. So these are two most used equations for angular momentum. Okay. So that's what angular momentum is. It's how hard it is to stop a rotating object. These are the equations for angular momentum. When you apply this into problems though, you're going to apply it like how you applied this one into problems. And we never use, we didn't often use something that looked this simple. Instead, we used the conservation of momentum. Okay. And conceptually, this means momentum is conserved 
in an isolated system. in which net force is equal to zero. Okay, that is your conservation of linear momentum, this momentum right here. Okay, for us in rotation, it's the same exact thing, but it's a conservation of angular momentum. So angular momentum is conserved in an isolated system when net torque is equal to zero. So that means the initial momentum before the collision equals the final momentum after the collision. Okay, after a collision. So obviously there's a collision happening. Something is one object is being collided with another rotating object and you get the conservation of angular momentum. Okay. Um, this is actually, uh, this kind of really makes sense when you think about what's happening here. So let's say, I just want to briefly talk about this in terms of what's happening conceptually. Um, if we were in class right now, I would have a demo of this and I would have one of you come up and sit on a rotating stool. Okay, so what this stool looks like is this is the stool and there's like a plank on here and then a kit. Don't 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 judge my pictures here. This is like this is, let's say, one of you. Okay, and what you would do is you would spin yourself on this and then put your feet up on the platform so your feet are not touching the floor and you're spinning you're spinning you're spinning and usually sometimes i would give you some sort of weight to hold okay one year i made the mistake of giving like two pound weights which was incredibly heavy for what this demo is um a more appropriate thing would be like soup cans or something like that so anyway you're spinning on this Okay, you're spinning, you're spinning with your arms extended. Okay, so the mass is right here. And the mass is located at some distance R from the pivot point. And this is the pivot point, like the center. Okay, now that means L, which is equal to, I'm going to use MVR in this case. So that r is very very big it's so big that you're you're completely extending your arms okay so what that means is the v has is a little bit little okay this is your initial angular momentum now if you were to bring your arms in in close to your body bring the soup cans in close to your body let me get a different call okay that means your r We'll now go down the mass of the soup cans is fixed but what would have to happen to that velocity well that would velocity because to compensate for the lack of radius that velocity would have to go really high so that means you would be spinning extremely fast when your arms are in and this is actually one of the reasons why i wanted to go ice skating with you guys because you would have done this as an ice skater at um, the stadium, if we would have gone. Um, so you would have seen this and you see this in the, in the Olympics, or if you watch any figure skating, you see when the ice skaters bring their arms in, as opposed to when they have them out, um, their speed completely changes. And that's because of angular momentum, the conservation of angular momentum. Okay. Um, I wanna go through an example with you guys in the packet, you guys are doing homework. Um, the last two pages of the packet, so we're basically done with rotation. The last thing we're talking about is angular momentum. It'll go pretty quick. So that means you can expect a test coming up soon. Um, since I have this open right now, on Khan Academy, I have linked um, some of these videos here on my website. They're right here under today's date. You, if you wanna do yourself any favors, you should watch these videos. Um, they're very good and it talks about different concepts. I mean, 
if you ever watch these videos, they're a little bit, they're, they're very thorough and they're drawn out. Um, I know some of you like to enhance the speed on this, which is great, but you can go through some calculations too, which I highly recommend. So I'm going to go through an example with you now, but there's some good calculations on here that you should do. Um, you do like four problems or whatever. I'm going to do one of these problems with you now from the homework. Okay, so this is actually the example I was talking about that we would have done in class. Okay. A student sits on a pivoted stool while holding a pair of weights. The stool is free to rotate about a vertical axis with negligible friction. The moment of inertia of student in weights is 2.25 kilograms meters squared. The student is set in rotation with arms outstretched, making one complete turn every 1.26 seconds. So that I know is the period. What is the initial angular speed? Okay, great. So angular speed is omega. My equation is two pi over T. So two pi over 1.26 seconds is, I'm going to punch this to my calculator, 4.99 radians per second. This is a nice problem because it's kind of going, it's making you solve all the necessary things to solve. As he rotates, he pulls the weights inward, so the new moment of inertia. So when you change, when you pull the weights inward, okay, so here's a little picture. This is not a good picture, but this is the rotating stool, okay? Obviously, you're sitting here. Okay, those are your legs. When you pull the weights inward, that changes your eye. Why does it change your eye? Because typically, your equation for I is MR squared. If you pull the weights inward, your R is changing. So that changes your eye. Okay, so I is not fixed in this problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, I'm going to say, my initial angular momentum is equal to I omega naught. I, uh, I initial is given to you before. It's 2.25 kilograms meters squared. And my omega naught is 4.99 radians per second. Okay. In this case, there is no net torque on the system. A net torque would be another force causing this thing to rotate more. So like, let's say, um, here you are, this is you over here. Let's say someone else is taking you and pushing you. Okay, that'd be a force applied causing this to rotate more. That would be a net torque, okay? There's no such thing in this problem. So that means, Angular momentum is conserved. So this is equal to L final. Okay. I'm actually going to get another color here so we can signify L final. So L final is equal to I final omega final. They give you I final. It's 1.8 kilograms meters squared times omega final. You're going to divide and solve, and you should get... 6.23 radians per second. So as he pulls his arms in, this goes down and this goes up. You can see that here. So it, it goes, it's actually a really big increase. You do not want to be in that stool. I mean, it's pretty scary if you have heavy weights on there, by the way. Okay, so the next question says, Find the work done by the student on the system while pulling in the weights. So when you're pulling in the weights, you're doing work on the system because you're actually, I mean, if you think about it, you're doing work, it, you feel it, okay? So we're gonna go back to an old equation, work equals change in kinetic energy, okay? But kinetic energy is not one half mv squared. Instead, we're using kinetic energy rotation. Final minus kinetic energy rotation initial. So one half I final omega final squared minus one half I initial 
omega initial squared. So you're going to plug in all these numbers that we just got. We're going to plug in this one, this one, this one, and this one. Solve, and the work done by the student is 6.92 joules. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to stop there. You guys are going to finish this handout on the next page. And you'll be good to go. Um, I'll set up a live stream so you can ask questions. But um, again, if you get stuck, go to those videos. I posted a bunch of videos online. There's also an AP review video on Angular Momentum. It's like 40 minutes long. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.